Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Clinton Lofthouse and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. In this walkthrough, I'm going to be showing you how I created this cyberpunk noir image in Photoshop. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video. So before we get into the actual walkthrough, I just wanted to quickly go over why I decided to create this image. So I'm a big fan of the cyberpunk genre. I love the, the very bright neon um, cyberpunk images. I've created lots myself. But one thing I've noticed is that recently there's been a, a very big kind of oversaturation of these kind of images with the pink and the blue neon. Um, I love them, but I, sometimes for me when something becomes a little bit of a cliche or a little bit of a trend I tend to want to go in a different direction and I think that's good to do You don't want to be copying what everyone else is doing when you go on Instagram You will be inundated by images which are basically images of people copying other people's copies of images And it, it just turns into this big thing. So I decided for this I thought I want to do cyberpunk images. I love cyberpunk So what can I do? And one of the main uh, reasons I did this is because I just wanted to also try and push myself into a different direction and see what I could come up with. One of my favourite films is The Lighthouse and the cinematography in that is very, very beautiful. It's very noir, like harsh lines, dark shadows. I thought, what if I can take the kind of cyberpunk image and instead of using the usual tropes like these kind of images here, the pink and the blues and very bright neon, what if I can create maybe some cyberpunk noir images and just use black and white so I'm stripping the colour out completely but still trying to keep the cyberpunk essence and make it creative by using shadows in a certain way and that's where this image basically comes from. So don't try not to follow trends, I mean if you want to that's totally fine but just try and put your own spin on it maybe um, and you never know what you'll come up with you might come up with a, an idea for a full series which is maybe what I'm going to do now with this uh, and before we go on I just want to say I do love these kind of images but I just don't want to be creating what everyone else is creating at the moment so let's get on with the actual walkthrough so this is the stock image from uh, Adobe Stock and what I'm doing here on a blank layer is I'm just painting in maybe where I want the different effects to be, the lines on his face and just give me a general outline of how I want the effects to look. Again these will change a little bit as we go along but it's good just to sketch out things and then you can just turn that blank layer off and on when you need to. You can just use it for a guide so I can use these lines now when I'm using the pen tool to make selections or to cut certain parts out or just to guide me along where the effects need to be. So I'm just using the pen tool now to make the selection which is where the kind of bottom jaw part of the cyberpunk face is going to be. So again I just filled that with meta selection, filled it with black and then I started playing around with how can I make this look like it's got depth. So I started using bevel and emboss in the layer styles. And you get to the layer styles just by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer panel. So here I'm with bevel and, and emboss and I'm, I don't want to lie, it, this was quite an experiment so I just played around with the settings to see what I've got and I got some decent effects after a little while of playing around but it worked better on the lines on his face than it did this actual mask here at the bottom and it's good just to sometimes get stuck in and play around I have wrote the settings down for the lines on his face which so I can go back and have a look at them later when I create some more of these um, cyberpunk noir images so now I'm just creating a um, line with, again with the pen tool and I was trying to work out how I can make the lines thinner and basically I was using the pen tool and then using the um, clicking 
the right hand button on the mouse and then turning it into a path and then filling that path and it fills the path on how big your brush is so you need to make sure your brush is set to the right size and now I've got the lines I then decided again to use the bevel and emboss to add some depth to those lines and basically that was just creating a little bit of a white line along the black line so it looks like it's got that 3d effect so here I am now just going through the stock trying to find some scar tissue that I wanted to use on the face so it looks like the bottom part of his jaw there was a little bit of um, scar in there when they put this like I don't know what to call it basically just basically the mechanic parts are the um, the Android parts of his face I'm not sure what the correct term is for that but there you go we'll call it the mechanical parts <laughs> um, and as you can see the nose I did change later on because it did look a little bit ridiculous having that part come down as you can see here so I just with a layer mask erased that and as you can see the bevel and emboss did actually put some like white alongside so it does look 3d but I did actually change the color of those lines later with hue saturation so now what I did there was I did a little dodge and burn just to add a little bit more depth to the mechanical face mask part and now I'm just adding, I did think I need to add some sort of shadow here and I did draw along the this kind of uh, mask with the brush tool but it didn't look that good so I did lower the opacity on that and later I come back and I add a shadow to it and now I started painting in white lines again along the lines of the um, black lines just again to make it feel a bit more 3D and to create depth and the more I did that the more it looked like it, it sunk into his skin again this was basically the first time I've ever done this so there is a bit of experimentation going on and playing around And if you, if you press R you can rotate your image so that's what I do a lot when I'm painting because it's easier to paint from certain angles for some reason. And now what I'm doing, I'm going in and just I decided to paint some lines into this mask at the bottom to make it look more science fiction like or cyberpunk like. So basically if you hold shift and click at one spot and then keep it held down and click at the other you'll get a straight line with the brush. So I was doing that so I painted these black lines onto the mask and then later on I did then oh, I now go alongside these black lines with a grey colour alongside the black to give it that 3D effect and as you can see as I'm painting the, the lighter line next to the dark line you get that bevel feature as well that bevel feel so it's nice to play around with some painting elements as well I'm painting some little bits in so I did lower the opacity on the the lighter bits because they were a little bit too strong and then I was just straightening in this uh, cyberpunk face mask out by just straightening the edges but just by using the pen tool and deleting parts of the mask So what I started to do now is I just wanted a little bit of darkening around the eye, which I did here, and then just lowered the opacity. Did do it too strong at first, but I decided to just lower that with the opacity. And here we have the stock image of a barcode that I just wanted to put on the guy's forehead sometimes uh, it looks pretty cool just to have these little touches again just using free transform and the distort um, transform just to get it to match his head and I do believe that I played around again with this a little bit later on but just resizing it and then adding a little bit of a blur so it wasn't so sharp and 
Now just painting in this eyebrow area here, it looks a little bit fake. So I painted back in some of the dark and painted away some of the white. Again, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted when I was doing this, but I didn't fully plan everything out. So I was kind of working this out as I went along. So I decided to download some stock pieces from Adobe. And I wanted to add some sort of uh, feature to the chin strap. So I thought, oh, this could work. So I basically cut it out and brought it in and I just, it looks a bit too garish for me. Uh, it was a bit over the top. I wanted this one to be a little bit more subtle. So I um, clipped it to the face mask and thought I could just move the texture around and use it in there, but it was it was a little bit too much for me. So I decided to go a little bit more subtle with the feature to the chin strap. And then I decided about adding, maybe trying to add some little bits to the mask. Again, that didn't work. So again, just playing around with these things and seeing what fits and what doesn't. You don't have to settle on the first thing that you find. You can keep playing around and trying different things. That could have worked maybe if I was going for a very over-the-top sci-fi look, but I wasn't. So again, just playing around with it, trying to warp it, and eventually deciding it's just too much. It doesn't really fit the theme that I'm, I'm going for, which is... A, a little bit more subtle, a bit more realistic. So again, just playing around, cutting parts off of this robot guy and bringing them in, clipping them to the mask and seeing what we can come up with. So I was also trying to match the light on the mechanical, mechanical parts with the light on his face, which is important. So I carried them playing around with this for a little while and decided this is this is not not for me. Just using curves there to play around with the tone, the lights and darks of these stock images. And then I decided, oh well, I'll add some more lines in. <laughs> so I again with the paintbrush decided to paint some more lines into this face mask, which again it's quite fun to do some digital painting. Again, just experimenting and playing around. See, I, I feel like I got the these lines down a little bit better the second time than the first time. And that's it with Photoshop. The more you practice, the more you do these things, the more you experiment and play around, the more you get better at different techniques, but also just learning new things and and refining them as well. Don't be scared to just get stuck in there and just play around and see what happens. Sometimes that can be fun. So again, just using the brush, resizing it to quite thin and then holding down shift and creating straight lines with the brush. And now distorting the barcode on his head a little bit better. So I decided to add some kind of pattern to the chin strap. So I thought I'd find an image like this on Adobe Stock and then just play with blend modes and see if I can get something so it's not too garish, it's, you get the pattern of the stock through into the black and it's just quite subtle. Eventually this is the one I ended up with. So again just placing it over, clipping it to that so it's then working inside that mask and then using blend modes and blend diff just to blend the the darks and the lights so it sits in that mask quite realistically. And then I did use a warp tool just to play around and warp those um, features to the mask. And then with a layer mask just paint away the areas that I didn't want and it's that easy. Just using the opacity now to take that down. And then I decided I wanted some sort of protrusion coming from the skin where there would be lights what are stuck into his skin. So I thought, how would I do that? So I basically downloaded this rivet and I added one to the mask first and basically I used curves adjustments 
and just pulled down the lights on that till it went dark and then put it onto his mask but then when I added them to his face I did the same thing but I used blend if just to bring the color of the skin through into the whites and I desaturated it to black and white and now I'm just adding the headpiece same process as before bringing it in just lining it up and using warp just to make it so it, it lines to his head a little bit better and then using curves to play with the lights and the darks and the tone you can see me keep flicking the sketch back on and off just to see where the guidelines are so it is important sometimes that you do that at the beginning So just desaturating the model there just to see what it looks like and it does look better and now i'm creating the shadow for the the different elements that i've added to his head i think when you create something there's also always a little shadow there so the light is coming down from kind of the above left so i'm getting the shadow so it, it works in that way as well so you've got it looks like there's something placed on his head without the shadow it doesn't look as realistic and now i'm just using um linear light and a brush on a blank layer just to paint those little lights in as well and now taking one the the eye of the android stuck and just placing it into his and then i added a layer mask and just blended that out so it was more subtle you just got that nice mechanical glow in the middle of the eye which i think worked quite well So just labeling things now to try and tidy up the layers panel i should really do this early on but you know i get carried away like everyone does but then as it gets further down i'm like i cannot work my way through these layers so i do decide to label them and keep it a little bit more organized so what i was doing then is just playing with the overall tone of the image the contrast again looking at the guidelines to see where i can add things using the layer mask to paint out those areas on his chin strap because this is non-destructive we can go in and out of any of the layers so I did want to paint um, to add some lights to his neck and I wanted them to kind of protrude from the skin and have the light in the middle so I did play around with having some sort of patterns what protrude from the skin and again I used bevel emboss to try and make them look 3D. I wasn't very happy with the way they looked. So I did play around with this for a little while trying to add the lights in and then eventually I settled on using the rivets um, as the little lights that come from his skin, which did work a lot better. It was a lot more subtle. These patterns looked all right. It just didn't look realistic enough for me. as you can see I'm just playing around now in my head I'm probably probably thinking oh my god these look ridiculous what am I gonna do <laughs> so again sometimes you just have to keep trying and come back to stuff as you can see I left those lights and came back to the neck again the same uh, way I did the um, the textures onto the jaw mask I then used the same way on the neck just bringing in the stock image clipping it to the neck and then putting it onto a blend mode which was linear light I believe for this and then just lowering the opacity so you can see the textures there but it's not very detailed so now I decided to add some lights to these um, grooves in the head section again on a blank layer uh, painting that on but it wasn't straight enough so I kind of had to bite the bullet and use the dreaded pen tool <laughs> which I tried to get away with not using it if possible but it just I needed these lines of light on his head to be very precise it looked a bit amateur to just paint it in and have the line going wobbly so all I did was create some selections with the pen tool fill them with the killer color and then just add the glow by painting then over these with a brush on a light kind of linear dodge blend mode and just painting over the light with red so you get that nice glow a 
like so. But as you can see, I keep flicking back from black and white to color because I did know that black and white is how it's going to look. And then I also wanted the, the hotspot of these lights in those lines. So I just created a path with the pen tool and then filled that with a stroke, a white stroke. And as you can see now, I'd started to play around with the idea of the rivets. So I brought them in, I placed free transform and distort to try and get the angle right of these rivets playing around. So it matched the lines of the or the angle of his neck or his back, whichever part of his body that is. It's kind of the neck back. And then with Blend If I brought in the um, colour of the underneath layer to his skin like so and then I just duplicated those and then I added the lights in the middle so very simple really but quite effective it looks pretty cool you've got these things coming out of the skin so it looks like maybe the lights have been added like pushed into his skin so again that was basically just using a layer mask to get rid of the kind of the outer edge and then using blend if to bring the color of the skin through to this rivet and then I also added one to his his temple on his head there as well again using blend if using a layer mask just to kind of erase that circle around the outside and then lowering the opacity a little bit again not really done this before so this was a new technique as well that I learned so it's fun to play around with the, these things and then on a blank layer on linear dodge I just painted some light into those centers of the rivets so it looks like there's a little light placed in there and it looks pretty effective so now I'm probably just thinking looking at the image every time the uh, the everything stops like this I'm basically just taking the image in and thinking right what can I do next what needs fixing Then I tried playing with this mask a little bit just to try and refine it. And then I wanted a little bit of a shadow on this mask as well. So I just painted one in um, on a blank layer using multiply blend mode and then just lowering the opacity. So again, you've got that, that sense of depth that there's a little bit of a shadow that something's placed on his face. Without that shadow, it does look a little bit like it's just been plonked on. And now using the trusty pen tool again to cut out the face of the guy or the head because I did want some kind of background so I just cut around the mask again making sure I didn't get a stubble what was sticking out of the mask too and then I used um, a layer mask after selecting mask just to, to hide the grey and cut him out and then I brought in this background here, again from Adobe Stock. Just brought it in and then I used a uh, field blur, I believe, or lens blur, sorry, on that background image to create the sense of depth, make it feel more cinematic. For some reason, a lens blur takes a while to, to kind of do on mine. So I just cut that bit out and then I wanted the near, the noir kind of feel so again that's a lot of shadow there's lots of shadows in noir so I use the curves adjustment to bring down the other lights on the main guy and then I then erased it with a layer mask on the parts where the lights were so basically darkening everything and then just erasing the curves adjustment where the lights were on his face and I did a, a different a few different I believe darkenings of the of the model and the background just with curves again all this is non-destructive and then also erasing it from the back of his neck there and his head where the light is coming from so it looks more realistic So again, I'm just looking at the image now, trying to work out if it needs to be darker. And yes, I believe it did. So again, I used a curves adjustment, darkened it. And then I also did one and 
added some light coming from that door a little bit more and then on the blank layer I did actually paint a little bit of light glare over the top of the model as well just to blend them in a little bit better and then what I'm doing now is with the blur tool I just blurred the edges of his some of his back and his neck and the bottom part of his t-shirt just so it blend uh, it had that depth of field effect because it wouldn't be as sharp in those areas where it was blur No, a tiny little bit of dodge and burn just to bring out some of the contours of his face and the mask as you can see nothing massive it took about five minutes now just blur in the center of his uh, eye a little bit because it was a little bit too sharp for the rest of the image and then once again with a curves adjustment darkening his face so there's a bit more of a residual fall off from the light to the dark. Now again, just looking at the image, so I knew it was coming to a to an end, and I just thought, well, let's have a little play around. Maybe I'll try adding some um, filters to it to see if I can pull out the detail a little bit. So I did try the bleach bypass. From color effects it just pulled out a little bit of detail but I cannot remember if I kept it or not and it looks like I did and then basically I added some sharpening and I added the sharpening with a high pass filter on a blank layer and then I'd selectively just kind of painted that onto his face and just pulled out some of the details and then I added a little bit more I blurred the edges of him a little bit more and then just cleaned up this part of his neck here the mask of the neck like so the line was a little bit too thick and then that is the end of the image so I hope you've enjoyed this image and you've seen basically from the conception to the finish I didn't know what I was going to end up with but um, I had like a slight vision in my head and I think it turned out really well. Some of these techniques I've not even really done before so I just experimented and played around. So if you did like this it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe and it would be awesome if you could share it as well and comment. Leave a comment if there's any questions I'm happy to ask. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot guys, truly appreciate the support and I will see you next time.